Okay guys, welcome to the solution video for the chapter 35 problems. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of walk through the solutions. You have the, um, the posted uh, version, but now I'm gonna kind of talk you through it. So, um, so the law, you're, you basically have some, some serious information here, okay? And we're gonna graph for part A, um, the short and long run Phillips curve. So we know that the long run Phillips curve is vertical and we know that it's vertical at the NRU okay so notice that it says the natural rate of unemployment is 5% so we have to label this 5% and then we got to put unemployment down here okay so then we have a downsloping SRPC, the short run Phillips curve and now we have to use actual numbers kind of showing um, where the inflation rate and level of unemployment are. So we are currently um, at an actual unemployment rate of 7%, and we know that since the origin is zero, as we move to the right, we're gonna be getting higher numbers. So we have to put the actual uh, uh, rate of, of unemployment, and then the inflation rate that's gotta to correlate to is over here at 3%. Okay, so 7% and 3%. Okay, and I believe we're supposed to label this uh, point B. Okay, so um, you got the numerical values, you've labeled a point B, so you are done with A. Now, assume that the government of country X takes no policy action to reduce unemployment. In the long run, what's going to happen? Okay, so will, so this is a question, will the economy resolve itself if you don't do anything? And the answer is yes, the economy will resolve itself. Um, but of course, there will be pain uh, associated with that situation where you have an unemployment rate of 7% with a natural rate of unemployment at 5%. So that means we are basically in a recession with, with higher unemployment than we're supposed to have. So um, what will happen to the short run aggregate supply curve? You don't have to graph this. Uh, you just have to explain it. So it's going to shift right. And the reason is the high unemployment rate puts downward pressure on wages. So if there's a whole bunch of unemployed people, they're going to bid each other lower and lower and lower to get the few, the two few jobs that are available. Okay, so that's really what's going to happen there. That's that's your answer. Oh shoot, I've erased too much. Um, so this is BI and this is BII. So the long run Phillips curve will not change. Remember that uh, the you don't have to explain this, but um, but just know that the long run Phillips curve is vertical at NRU. Okay, and the NRU doesn't change just based on uh, on things like this. Um, it would only change, you know, over like long periods of time or or whatever due to a change in the workforce or, you know, like a major government policy or something like that. Okay, um, now we're on to Part C. So Part B is done. On to Part C, the fiscal policy action that could be used to reduce unemployment. So fiscal is um, fiscal is got to be about taxes or government spending and since we're in a recession we know that we want it to be expansionary so we have to decrease taxes or increase spending okay um, so relatively simple for part C I'm gonna slide down here and we'll do now part D so correct label graph of aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply show the impact on the equilibrium price level and real GDP of the fiscal policy action identified in C. So when we uh, decrease taxes or increase spending, what is going to happen? Um, so you've got your downsloping aggregate demand, you've got your upsloping SRAS. And what, if you decrease taxes, then that's going to be a situation where businesses and uh, people will increase their spending, so aggregate demand will shift to the right. Likewise, if you increase government spending, then G will go up. So in either situation, uh, we're going to go from PL1 up to PL2. 
and from our GDP one to our GDP two. Um, and that's what you got. So make sure that you label this access, access PL and this one real GDP. And that's that. Moving on. Okay, so like I said, this one's a little bit more review. Um, all right, so um, we're currently operating below the full employment level of GDP, and we have a balanced budget. So um, a correct label graph of where we are. So this is this one's going to be a little bit harder. I'll kind of shrink us down so we can see a little bit better. Um, okay, so we've got PL and real GDP. Um, this is what you've done before, basically. So you're going to have LRAS and then SRAS and AD. Okay, so this is going to be YF, Y1, PL1. Okay, so this shows that we are currently in a recession. So this YF has to be to the right. Um, and that's what's going to show you that you that you're in a recession. Um, there you go. All right. So the United States government increases spending on goods and services by a hundred billion, which is financed by borrowing. So since we started off um, a, with a balanced budget, we know that we're going to be going into debt. Um, so, but that, that's not really a part of this question. So this was A for B. Um, cyclical unemployment B one. Cyclical unemployment will go down. Okay, um, government intervention can change cyclical unemployment. That's what we're looking at here. Um, but for part two, the natural rate of unemployment, the NRU, will not change. The NRU is durable. It doesn't change just based on movements of the economy. All right, part C. If the MPC is 0.75, calculate the maximum possible change from a $100 billion increase. So um, remember that you've got 1 over 1 minus MPC or 1 over uh, MPS. So um, 1 over 0.25 equals 4. That's going to be our multiplier. So $100 billion in spending times 4 gives us 400 billion in spending. Okay, so that is the maximum change. Of course, it could be less, but that's the maximum. Um, now, the loanable funds market show the effect of the $100, $100 billion increase. So we talked about this in class, and it can go one of two ways. So the loanable funds market, um, you know, is always going to look like this with Q loanable funds here and real IR here. You've got down sloping demand for loanable funds and upsloping supply of loanable funds. Um, I typically look at the government as a demander of loanable funds. So when the government comes in, you're going to have an increase in quantity and a raising of the real interest rate. But remember I said that the other thing that you could do if you wanted was you could view the government as like a, a non-player, okay? So if the government is not really a player, then you've got supply and demand, and when the government comes in, it just takes away the supply. Um, so depending on how you sort of view things, uh, you can draw either one of these graphs. What really matters, since they're asking a question about the real interest rate, in both scenarios, you see that the real interest rate rises. Um, and then you have to s explain why. Um, actually, you don't have to, to do that. Yeah, it did. so just remember that the reason, um, well, it's just kind of what I, what I discussed there. Um, okay, then we'll move on to E. So based on the real interest rate in Part D, what's the effect on long-run uh, growth rate E? So the long-run growth rate will fall, and that is because... Um, the investment, so remember that IG is the most uh, is the most sensitive to higher interest rates. So investment will go down because money is more expensive. 
That's a little bit different wording than what you see in the solutions, but it's the same. Um, okay, now the last one, part F, assume that instead of financing the $100 billion increase in government spending by borrowing, the United States does a tax increase of $100 billion. Will this be the same? Uh, and then as... Uh, wait. Will this increase in government spending and taxes... Will this equal the increase? Golly, I had a hard time with that in the hint video, too. Um, and will we have a uh, change in GDP? So, um, real GDP will rise. Okay, so we do know that spending makes real GDP rise. Okay, so whether it's a lot of spending or a little spending, real GDP will rise. Okay, um, and then say that... Uh, the spending multiplier is larger, so, and let's look back at, will this equal increase in government spending, with this, will real GDP increase, decrease, or remain the same? Explain. So it will increase, um, but the spending multiplier is larger, so it won't increase as much. So that's that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a really pleasant Easter. Take good care.